Hi everyone, welcome to the Feel Good Violin Club. My name is Liz and today's video is all about intonation. If you are struggling to play in tune, I want to assure you that you really are not alone in this. And not only that, it's not something that really ever goes away. It's a skill that we continue to hone and refine even after years and years of playing. Um, but you will come away from today's video with some great advice and tips for learning how to play more in tune and uh, play with better intonation more reliably. I should say that if this is something that you find is not improving after maybe a few weeks, um, it would be good to get some sort of free tuner app on your phone or invest in a teacher. Um, this is one of those things where sometimes you really do just need some sort of external source to help you develop your, your sense of pitch. So let's hop in. So when it comes to intonation, we're really using two senses. Of course, we're using our ears, we're really listening, but we're also using our physical sense, our sense of touch and our awareness of small spatial changes and spatial sense from finger to finger. And really that physical spatial sense is just as important as our listening sense. So the first tip today is developing a reliable hand frame. And this has to do with creating this nice structure in your left hand so that fingers are more or less hovering right above their places on the fingerboard. So with this, we have nice arched fingers that hang more or less right over their spots, and they always stay pretty close to the string. And once you have this pretty reliable sense of hand frame, it is sturdy, or what I mean to say is you don't have to change that much about it. This is like our foundation for all left hand playing. So if I just keep my hand in this shape, but just rock or swing my elbow beneath the violin, I can take this exact same hand shape, put first finger down on the E string and pretty much know it's gonna be in a good place and in tune. And I can just take that same shape, rock my elbow underneath and go to the G string, put my finger down and also know it's gonna be in, the, in, in a good spot. So that is the very first tip about intonation. We want to keep fingers close and hovering over their places so that they really start to recall where the exact position of the finger should go. So this brings me right into my second point, which is that in order to develop really reliable intonation, we need our hands to be soft and supple. And this is true in our fingers, in our joints and in our palm. If our hands are kind of stuck and rigid and stressed, <laughs> they just don't really learn very well. It's this really interesting thing that I ended up realizing when I was doing my master's degree, that they truly just can't learn the distances unless they are soft and supple enough to sense those differences. And if they're, if they're rigid and stiff, they just, they can't really sense it. So that is really an essential part of learning how to play more reliably in tune. So this brings me right into the third point, which is totally very, very related to the first two, which is that when we're working on intonation and learning really precisely where fingers go on the fingerboard, we want to be really as attentive as possible to how all of that feels. If you, for example, put down second finger C sharp on your A string, if you do it with second finger by itself, um, it's going to feel different than if you put both fingers down. It's gonna feel different if you're coming from the E string or coming from the G string. It's gonna feel different if you're coming from fourth finger or from first finger or from any other string. So, um, it really is such a fine sense in the hand that we begin to develop as we're learning violin. And the more aware you can be of those fine spatial differences from pitch to pitch, the better. All right, the last couple of points are more about listening. 
So my fourth tip is to use your ringtones. And um, you probably know that we have four open strings on the violin. We have E, A, D, G. And you can really use these to test other pitches as you're playing. So just as an, as an example, if we are playing something in Suzuki Book 1, like maybe Minuet 2, just in those first couple of measures, we already have a whole bunch of pitches that we can cross-check with our open strings. So the very first pitch, we can check with our open G. That one we can even play alongside our G, our open G. We can actually play them together, which is a super, super useful way of, of checking your intonation. What we're going for is that super pure, kind of very open sense. If we're, if we're hearing some weird kind of waves in the air or something just feels very unsettling <laughs> about that, then you can know to maybe just rock your finger a little bit this way or that way to see if you can get it to better match your open G string. So just already the first note of minuet two, we can check to see if we're playing pretty in tune. Then we encounter a D, we can check, we can, uh, check that with our open D. high G on top. So we can't check that or we can't play it at exactly the same time as our open G, but we can still use our open G as a sense of pitch to see if we can kind of match it. And then we have G's again at the end, which we can check with our open G again. So even in that short span of time with Minuet 2, we've already been presented with a whole bunch of, uh, of notes that we can check with our open strings. If we keep going, you'll see even more. There's two E's, we can check with our open E. And here's a D, we can check with our D. And even there, we can check our D again. Using ringtones, using your open strings really is such a valuable way of helping you improve your sense of intonation. My last tip today is to listen, explore, and take your time. So often I find, um, especially with adult learners, they'll put a finger down, they'll kind of innately sense like, ugh, that doesn't quite sound in tune, and what this does usually is trigger a sort of like, ah, sort of response, <laughs> which is understandable, um, and a kind of like make it go away, uh, fix it as quickly as possible sort of feeling, that type of kind of frantic reaction. Um, and really the, the more helpful way of responding is to say kind of like, ooh, like let me dig into the sound of that out of tune pitch and let me kind of slowly maneuver my finger around a little bit this way, a little bit that way, maybe check with my open strings um, to see if I can find the pitch that feels more, more pleasant and more pleasing to my ear. That is such a valuable way of improving your intonation. If you can kind of go through that process of searching and figuring out yourself, you'll really learn more that way um, than just kind of looking at your tuner and seeing, oh, it's it's to this or to that, or even just, you know, you'll, you'll learn more than even if your teacher is saying, ah, it's too high, too low. Going through the process of figuring out yourself and really, really feeling out the difference, the often very slight differences you made from one finger to another, um, that is such a valuable way of helping you develop your sense of, of intonation. Okay, all. Good luck with your intonation journey. <laughs> um, I will be posting another video very soon about um, some a little bit more in-depth ideas about this. Um, these are kind of the basics, um, but if you're a more intermediate or advanced player, stick around. Um, that will be coming very soon. Also, if you are in any way struggling with practice at home, if you feel like there's a lot of mental baggage or you just kind of have trouble opening the case, 
Um, I encourage you to check out the banner in my on my YouTube channel where I've created um, something that I'm calling the Feel Good Practice Planner, which is a little sort of guide to help you along your practice journey. There are some guided prompts that encourage you to be reflective and sort of set an intention for your practice. So if that sounds at all interesting to you, head over to the link in my YouTube banner and also in my bio, and uh, you can get it free sent to your inbox. Thanks everyone, have a great one.